I know what I want to say. One of the most important uh, components in, in the Murfreesboro music scene, and one of the reasons that the 80s was such a golden age, uh, was because of the venues. Take a left, go down, uh, go east on Maine. You know, you can have all the bands in the world that you want in the city, but unless you've got places for those bands to play, you don't really have anything. And in the 80s, what I called the golden age of the Murfreesboro music scene, for several years, you could go see live music seven days a week. And that was really important to the development of the music scene. At one time, you had as many as seven or eight different venues in which bands could play. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about bands that played original music, original compositions. You had places like, uh, well, the Burrow is still around. Gentleman Gems is still around, but back in the 80s, it was called EJ's. You had The Hideaway. Jabs. Earlier in the 80s, you had KO Jams. It was BNL Pizza, Main Street. They were varied in a lot of different ways. The venues, some of them specialized in certain types of bands. I guess you could say that each venue had a culture that ranged from just the dingiest dive bar to, you know, the really nice professionally run music halls like Main Street which is still there. But that's one of the things that made it really special back then. You had all these different venues. They were very important, an integral part of the scene um, and almost as interesting as the bands themselves, the differences between these places. Take a left at the light. And we'll go uh, catch Jabs, KO Jams, and BNL Pizza. And like I said, you know, you know, for a while there, for several years, you could go see music, live music, live original music, seven nights a week. You can do that in Nashville now, but I mean, you really couldn't do it anywhere else. So it made the, it made the scene really special. And having that many venues, the city was able to support a lot of bands bands had venues to play you know if we had had well like now there's only a couple places for bands to play in murfreesboro and the music scene is really nothing like it was back then see the domino's pizza right there mm -hmm. see that parking lot where the cars are parked yeah that was the old jabs parking lot now those three trees that's where jabs was oh okay See where the building end right there is? B&L Pizza and KO Jams used to be right there. And further along towards us, Century 21 Records, that shopping center did like a little L and then there was a little alleyway and then you had the big Jabs building. Now the building that became Jabs started out the MTSU bookstore for a long time. Jabs was supposed to be a restaurant. The restaurant was not successful, so they built a stage, put in some beer taps, and started having bands. You had all these different types of music. Jabs, for instance, was very much the focal point for speed metal bands, thrash bands, punk bands, bands composed of high school students. At the Dumpster was one of these high school student punk bands, Jack, uh, punk band, they played at Jabs, but they also played Burrow. There was some overlap. I played Jabs a few times. Mr. Crow's Garden played here once, who later became the Black Crows. Now, KO Jams was only open 18 months, two years, but it had a pretty big impact on the future of live music in Murfreesboro. And it's also one of those storied places in Murfreesboro music history because REM played there and a band called Jason and the Nashville Scorchers opened up for them. And it was one of Jason's first shows. 
and Jason and the Scorchers became, well, they had a national record contract and they were a big influence on a lot of music in the 80s. They were part of that whole cow punk movement. So KO Jams was a very important venue early on in the 80s. All of these places were really fun places to see bands. You know, there was nothing fancy in any of them. Uh, they didn't have light rigs. It seems like B&L Pizza might have had a couple of, uh, just a couple of old cans for lights for the stage. But really, it was just a stage for bands to play on. If they wanted a light show, they'd bring their own light show or whatever. Uh, pull out here and take a left on Main Street. This is another two for this uh, gentleman Jim's right here. Because right next to it, where that pavilion is right there, there was another uh, business. It had a lot of different names. At one point it was called Faces. It was also called the Burrow Two. It didn't last long. It was only like, a, like some of these other places. But there were a lot of bands that played there. And the place behind us right here, EJ's, this is a place where a lot of bands would get their start. They would find their legs playing in a place like this. EJ's was really kind of a place for bands to cut their teeth when they were just starting out in Murfreesboro. It was the first place I played. You would play EJ's a few times and then you would move up from there move up in the food chain from there. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play there too. You never really knew what kind of crowd you were gonna get. There was always a chance that it was going to be a big redneck crowd, but you all also had just as much chance that it was gonna be a college crowd. So yeah, EJ's was a lot of fun. Another big place uh, was Red Rose. Uh, Red Rose was a coffee shop, uh, and it was also a venue for live music. Now, Red Rose started out as a dairy back in the 20th century, early 20th century. You would have these alternative bands that were touring the country would come in and play the Red Rose. Uh, but you also had a lot of local acts, Seth Timms, used to play there a lot. Jeff Curran, who in the early 90s was in a band called Celebrity Toast and Jam. Sharon Van Etten, she got her start at Red Rose when she was going to MTSU. A lot of singer-songwriters, uh, folk artists would play there. Had a really laid back atmosphere. I mean, it was a coffee shop, you know. It's that field right there. And it was a, it was a tragedy. The owners decided to tear the building down. The land was worth more with the building not on it, you know? Uh, so they evicted Red Rose and a couple of the other tenants in the building. And uh, so, yeah, unfortunately it's gone now. This, this is kind of a metaphor for the history of the Murfreesboro music scene. It's just, it's all been torn down. You know, and that happened over a period of time to most of the venues in town that used to host original music. So really, uh, it, 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 that kind of highlights the idea that these bands, uh, that these venues were as important to the music scene as the bands themselves. Like I said, you know, the, 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 the number of venues we had really supported this diverse scene that we had here, especially in the 80s. Um, you know, and it was, it was, it was a, an amazing time.